Hello, and welcome to episode 55 of Photo Kitchen. I'm your humble host, MD Welch, and today on this all-digital episode of Photo Kitchen, we're talking Adobe Premiere Basics. This video has been requested a lot by people I teach in person, but also a few people online who are just getting into the program or who have been using the program for a while, but still struggle with basic organization. So I'm going to give you some tips and some tricks to help you kind of make sense of this program because it does treat things a little bit differently than other programs programs. Now I already have Premiere Pro open and I'm going to hit the new project button. But of course, if you're a menu bar fan, you could go to file and you could go to new and you could do project there if you wanted to. Now when you hit new project, it is going to open up a window uh, that is honestly far more complicated than it needs to be. Dear Adobe, it doesn't need to be this difficult. So for this video, we're really only focusing on three fields here, the project name, the project location, and the project template, which I'll talk about templates and their pros and their cons at the end of this video. So if you're curious about templates, stick around. Now for the project name, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'll just call it PK Premiere, if I could uh, spell correctly, uh, demo. And if I didn't, I apologize in advance. I'm looking around microphones, I'm doing this. So once I have the name punched in there, it's important to stress a few things. Number one, it doesn't matter what you call this. Uh, it, it's just a reference for Adobe Premiere. Number two, misspellings and all that kind of things aren't going to show up, by the way. That's probably still part of number one. But another tip that I could give you is include a date at the end of it. So I'll do 2024. The reason why I do this is because if this is a project that's going to be ongoing or is going to maybe run a certain length of time, anytime Adobe runs through a new update, they will force you to change the name so, it, uh, so you have a new project file for the new version of Premiere, meaning that your older project file could be opened up in an older version of Premiere. And by the way, as a small side note, never upgrade Premiere in the middle of a project. It's always a bad idea. But if you do have to come back to something, it's great because then when the next update for Premiere comes out, you could just add and change the file name to the new date, which matches up the version of Premiere. You could also go with V1, V2, something like that if you wanted to. But I'm just going to add in the date at the end of it. The location is where the both the file for Premiere, this file that you just named, is going to be saved and also any autosave fields, uh, any of those functions will be saved as well. Now it's important to stress, and this is where the confusion begins, that your assets aren't necessarily guaranteed to be stored inside this folder if you don't want them to or you don't import them a certain way. It really depends on how you're going to work. So for some people, this folder is everything. For other people, this is just a simple location. Nevertheless, I'm going to come out, I'm going to click my little drop down, I'm going to go choose location, and I believe I'm in the right spot here. Yes, I've done something out on my desktop. I'll click on this and then go ahead and hit choose. And the, yes, there were some folders in there already. More on that in a moment. I'm going to come back to project template uh, at the end, as I mentioned before. So I'll go ahead down to the bottom right hand corner. I'll hit create and voila, I am now inside of Adobe Premiere, which the interface for Premiere might look different than your interface because I've customized this really unimportant for the moment. The only thing to point out is that when you click inside any of these boxes, technically called panels, that you will get usually some sort of outline in a color. In my case, it's blue. I'm going down to the bottom left-hand corner because that's where I put my project folder and that's where we're gonna spend a significant amount of time in the rest of this video. Now, good keyboard shortcut to know inside of Adobe Premiere. This also works inside of After Effects if memory serves. I can't remember if it works in other Adobe programs, but if you have a panel inside of Premiere selected, that gives you that color, in my case, blue outline, and you go to your number one key on your number row, not your number pad. So right above the letter Q, there's your number one. And just to the left of that is your accent key, tilde, and your key. And if you hit that once, it will take the panel and make it into full screen. Now, when you start to really add assets inside of Premiere or you're doing something a little bit more complicated, this is a lifesaver. And by the way, it's like a light switch. You just hit it again to go back to normal mode. And it is the same keyboard shortcut for both operating systems. It's important to take a moment to stress the following thing. What you do inside this project window is only happening inside of Adobe Premiere. Premiere doesn't care where files are stored or located. It will make it look like they're all part of the same project. So if you have like three hard drives, a network hard drive, a cloud uh, drive that you're drawing assets from, even though that they are in multiple locations, they will appear inside of here as if they were all inside of the same location. I believe this is the, what causes so many people to be confused with Adobe Premiere. 
Um, now, there's a couple of ways around this. If I hop over to my operating system, I already have some subfolders inside of here with some content already inside of them. So this is the actual folder here. You could see the name of the actual Premiere project going on. I have a folder with some photos inside of it. I have another folder called GFX-MUX, which is an old school editor way of saying graphics in music. And then I have another folder with footage inside of it. Now, all of these folders, I assembled content and brought them in first before bringing them inside of Premiere. And by the way, you can bring these folders in all sorts of ways. You could use the traditional import button. You could actually, at least on the Mac, I'm sure it's the same on Windows. You could actually drag and drop them and just drag them into the project window. So if you see the project window, you could just do a drag and drop if you wanted to. That's a nice feature. Or what I prefer is just inside the project panel, double clicking and it will take you to the last place that you imported. So I'm gonna go out to my desktop, I'm gonna to go to my folder here, and I'm actually gonna select all three of these folders. Now, when I hit import, and this again is just one way to import here, and imports the folders. By the way, Premiere's term for folders is bins, not folders. So when you're clicking on the new bin icon in the bottom right-hand corner of the project panel, or you go up to file and you go new, you're looking for bin, not folder, by the way. But now these are bins, same thing as folders, by the way. But it's not only brought in the bins, but it's also brought in all of the content that was inside of those bins. So it does match what the operating system has. Now, if you like being organized on your operating system or it's part of your backup plan or something like that, my biggest piece of advice to staying organized in Premiere is get your assets in these folders first and then either import the entire folder, then becomes a bin, or import from those folders if you've already imported them into the same folders and match them up. That way, what you see in your operating system matches up inside of Premiere. Now, the other side of this argument is who cares, right? Premiere is just going to manage these assets as things are going on and you could do whatever you want to these particular assets. A good example of this is I'm gonna do another import here. I'm going to come into a recent photo kitchen episode that I shot so on camera and I bring in some footage. By the way, sometimes you will get um, some sort of errors, especially with footage when you bring them in. If you're doing any sort of external recorder, sometimes you'll get like XML, XML files, sorry, XML files or other types of things that Premiere doesn't recognize. That's fine, I'll click OK. And it brings in that folder as, of course, a bin. And you can see here as I'm opening this up, there, there's a lot of content inside of here. I don't have to maintain this anymore. That's the beauty and curse of Premiere. I could come into here, select these two video clips and just drag them to the footage folder, right? And then take this whole folder and delete it. Now, have I deleted the folder? No, I'll go back out to my operating system. I'll go to that actual location, uh, slide over here. Uh, let's get to the right one. And sure enough, there's the folder and there's the actual, you know, structure of that. But in Premiere, it doesn't care, right? So you could go ahead and drag and drop whatever you want to and move them around and also rename them. Now, one thing to point out, um, oh, let's just double click on this and just say uh, me in the kitchen wide. And by the way, how you want to name things is totally up to you. One thing that I would advise is a lot of times if you have the same camera angle, that you start with the type of camera angle, wide, tight, extreme close-up, something like that in the front, and then label it as me in the kitchen or something like that. I should put wide in the front of this, but everybody's gonna have their own secret thing. And as you progress more in Premiere, you'll kind of find your own secret sauce here. But I've renamed this file inside of Premiere, but if I hop over to the operating system, the files themselves are still named the exact same way. Again, a benefit or a curse depending on how you're looking at it because the files don't auto rename in the operating system. And not to mention, I've moved their location in Premiere from one bin to another, but that location hasn't moved inside of the operating system. Now, this is going to cause some people some trouble. Some people will immediately embrace this. Some people will fight through it. What I would say is if you are coming from the more traditional route, of trying to stay organized on your computer, then do this. Assemble most of your project before you even create a new project in Premiere. So create a folder for your footage, create a folder for photos, create a folder for your graphics and that kind of thing. And then you could go ahead and then import all of that into Premiere after you make the project and you will have something that matches up. And I do this, by the way, uh, for most of my projects simply because it makes it easier for me to back information up. It also makes it easier for me to archive information as well. Although there's another way to do that, which I'm going to show you 
uh, at the end of this along with those templates as well. But this does make life a little bit easier. So when I'm exporting out of uh, Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One, everything goes into the Photos folder. Any graphics, any music that I download or create goes in the Graphics Music folder and footage goes inside the Footage folder. And of course, you could do subfolders inside of there or you could just, just put things in loose and then create sub bins. Like for example, if I wanted to separate inside of Footage here, I could create the new bin icon. Now I have a bin in here and I can call this Kitchen Shots. Uh, and I'm being very abstract with the naming of my stuff here. And I'm just going to drag it up to Kitchen Shots and that's great. And by the way, small little secret, if you double click on the bin here, Kitchen Shots in my particular case, it will open it up as a new panel. So it kind of isolates it. So if you have some particular part of a project that you're really trying to focus on, this can make life a lot easier because now you can just focus on those assets. And believe you me, as you start to add to your project, this window, even in full screen, will start to become unwieldy and a real pain in the butt. So that is a huge asset there. And of course, once you're done with this, you can click this little uh, three lines here, the panel options button and do close panel. And then that will close everything down, but it doesn't delete anything. Speaking of delete, if you do delete something inside of Premiere, just like renaming it or moving it around, it only does it inside of Premiere. It doesn't do it in the operating system. So uh, the, another plus and also bad thing to that, because a lot of times you will have footage that just maybe you hit the start button and then you recorded for 10 seconds and now you stopped it. You don't want to see it in Premiere, but now that still lives on your operating system rotting away. That's why we call it data rot. And again, I'll give you a solution for that in just one moment. So um, that's an important distinction to make on just to understand that relationship and life in Premiere becomes a lot easier and just kind of pick where you want to go. A lot of people editing inside of Premiere have assets over all sorts of different hard drives and they just need to assemble those things as they go, which leads to templates. Now, let's say for whatever reason, how I have this set up is a uh, standard way. I have like common assets, logos, stingers, bumpers, slates, all of those things. I have them in subfolders. Everything's nice and neat and organized. What you can do is either create a new project and add those assets, or maybe you have a project and you could strip it out and do a save as or something like that. But if you just have those basic things set up, what you could do is come up to file and do a save as template. So I'm just going to call this uh, PK template demo because I don't really care too much about it. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and then I'm going to come up to file and I'm going to go ahead and close this project down and then I'll go ahead and do a new project here and if I come back into project template now where it says none you will see that it actually has this demo here and when I click on this and I will just call this uh, uh, I'm going to keep it in the same location but I'll just call this template demo right when I go ahead and hit create now all of my bins are there, but any assets inside of those bins are also there as well. So if you're doing similar types of things, like if you are a YouTube creator or you're doing the same type of social media content or you're doing commercials for people or some sort of uh, training or tutorials and you always have those same assets, make yourself a template because then all of that information is already there. Regardless of how you have it organized on the hard drive, at least it's all organized inside of Adobe Premiere. Now, the last thing to say, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this particular project down. And I'm going to come back to my original here. And there we go. And I'm just going to drag a piece of footage to the sequence icon here or the new icon. When you drag footage to the new icon here, instead of it giving you the option of what new item that you want, it will actually make a new sequence based upon the actual settings. And if you know that the settings, by the way, of your video file is correct as far as compression and aspect ratio and resolution, this is a great way to get started because essentially everything is copied from the footage and made a new sequence. I made a new sequence here just to demonstrate how you can consolidate information at the end of a project or whether you're moving to another hard drive. If you go up to file and you come down to project manager, what you could do is select the multiple sequences and you have to have sequences created. It won't do this unless you have sequences created. But what it will do is it will take the sequences and all of the assets attributed or used in that sequence or sequences that you have checked here. And then it allows you to copy those files and move them to a new location. So if you're about to go on the road and you need this on an external hard drive or the project is done and you're about to archive it and put it on an archive drive, this is a great resource, especially for archiving because my favorite feature here is exclude unused clips. 
One problem with Premiere is it doesn't rename files out to your operating system, as you've seen, and also it doesn't delete files, as you've seen. So what's nice about this is that you can choose to exclude all the information you didn't use in the project, and it can allow you to strip away all of the useless information. Now, you got to be careful about this, because if you had footage that you really liked, but you just didn't use in the sequence, this could be a way to end up accidentally deleting those files later on as far as however you manage your data. But if you're stripping everything out and you only need to keep what was actually used, this is a great resource. You have to treat this with kid gloves though and kind of understand this. So don't do this in haste, but this is a great way to archive. This is a great way to back up. This is a great way to transfer to other hard drives. And I would say the defaults of all the checkboxes and everything is pretty straightforward here, especially if you're brand new to Premiere. You just need to choose a destination path and then it will tell you how much room you have left on the hard drive down here and you could actually calculate this out so you know if you have enough room. And then once you do that, you could go ahead and click OK. Obviously, big projects are going to take longer than smaller projects, so don't do this at the last minute, especially if you have a massive thing that you have to handle. But this should make life a little bit easier as far as handling things inside of Adobe Premiere. Just keep in mind that how Premiere handles the organization and the naming of files is going to be unto itself once you're inside of that program. I would still rely on your operating system. I would still store things uh, correctly in your operating system, so at least things are kind of consolidated there. But if you're bringing in assets from other areas or locations, Premiere doesn't care. If you have to delete or remove things, Premiere doesn't care. Reorganization, again, over and over again, Premiere is going to make things easier for you. And once you learn that and once you understand that, it will make it, this program much easier to work with and like. Speaking of liking, I hope you've liked this video. I hope you made it this far. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Please share this with anybody who's also maybe struggling with Adobe Premiere or other photo related and video related, obviously, topics. And until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from Photo Kitchen.